That's 15 combined. So six million, so you're trying to tell me three million people have been killed? Three million people have been killed by the IDF? That's not even close to being true. Yeah. So let me, let me ask, let me ask. Then build, build out that, build it out for me. So let me get this straight. You, you, you don't hate Jews, you just hate the Jews' right to exist in their homeland. Okay. Wait, hold on a second. That's a, that, you want me to exist, Yeah, exactly. Like, so that, that, that's one of the worst identity politics arguments. Just because I'm not something, it doesn't make me wrong. What's up, YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling cool. Today, guys, we're back here into a new video. So today, we're going to check it out. Charlie Cook humiliates radical pro Hamas students. This is a completion of the entire pro Hamas students and anti Israel. So, this is going to be a very long video. Let's check the video out together, guys. I think that the um, determination of the Israeli capital should be something that should be settled in a Israeli Palestinian bilateral negotiation for the creation of a Palestinian state, which is something that the Palestinian people should be able to have. They should be able to have freedom. They should. So they do have freedom. What freedoms do the Palestinian people not have right now? Well, I mean, currently. Name one freedom. Uh, have you been to the West Bank? Something they lack freedom, freedom of movement. Sure they do. An Arab in the Palestinian Authority can travel to Israel, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, in and out with any sort of restriction. I've been to Judea and Samaria. I've been to Hebron. I've been to the Golan Heights. As a Christian, thankfully, I'm allowed in there. You know, all my Jewish tour guides and my IDF friends as Jews are not allowed in the West mm. Bank. Why? So what freedom don't they have? Well, you know. No, I don't know. <laughs> Can you name one freedom that the Palestinian people do not have? I mean, okay. Look. Or, or is that just a talking point with no evidence? Look, sophistry aside for both of us, I... You know, just Kim, there's an Kim not prepared. There's, there's not prepared an imbalance here between what the between Israel and Palestine that the current Israeli government. What imbalance? Can you build, build it out for me? Because there's you have you haven't been able to name a freedom they don't have. Did you know that the Israeli government gave up the Gaza Strip in pursuit of peace in 2006? and it was immediately taken over. 10,000 Jewish settlers left the Gaza Strip True. in pursuit of peace in 2006, and it was immediately taken over by the terrorist group Hamas, True. which is one of the richest parts of Israel. Israel, Israel. Israel gave it up voluntarily because they thought it would give them peace, and they, the PA didn't give it to them. So what freedoms does the PA not have? Well, I mean, honestly... This is really important because you come up here and say, Alan Omar said nothing wrong. You make a factless, evidence, you know, totally absent of evidence statement, the Palestinian people don't have freedom. Say one thing, please, defend yourself. So, Look, I'm so, I came out here not completely prepared. Well, because with, it doesn't exist. So here's the thing. The talking point is factless. The Palestinian Authority exists as a governance structure over now what is truly Judea and Samaria, which has always been Israel. True. Do you know where the word Palestine comes from? You probably don't. Uh, Arabia Palestiniana, no, which was the Roman it was Philistine. Province. It was Philistine, which is, an Arabia, uh, which is a Roman term, which only goes back about you know, 1,400 years. Israel has always been the home of the Jews, dating back for 3,500 plus years. Israel is yeah. mentioned over 635 times in the Torah. Jerusalem has zero True. religious significance in the Quran at all to the Arab Muslim people, yet it's mentioned 637 times. Yet under Israeli control, the Arabs and the Muslims still get total and complete access to their holy sites. Yet where the Arabs control areas, the Jews are not allowed to visit there whatsoever. Yeah. Why is that the Palestinian Authority pays the families of terrorists that kills Jews? They have a pay for slave policy. Thank God that President Trump just finally defunded yeah. it. I encourage you one thing. Don't believe the facts and the narrative that are just coming from the media. Thank you very much. Because you're just wrong here, and you obviously can't defend your position. Go and visit the West Bank yourself. You'll see the facts up and close, because you're incorrect. Which, 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 land, which land are you talking about specifically? Well, G Gaza, they've given up. Gaza's all PA now. They've given up Gaza? Yes, the IDF does not... How many Jews live in Gaza? How many Jews live in Gaza? Zero. J zero. Every Jewish, every Jewish uh, Israeli was forced out of Gaza in 2005. Zero Jews live in Gaza. Zero. Yes, because Jew Jews tend to have children, so you have to build more houses to accommodate them. No, no doubt. So, it, it, so like, let's talk. Like, just facts about Gaza. Used to be under Israeli IDF control. 
They gave it up in pursuit of peace in 2005. It's now become a hot tub for terrorists and Hamas. Hundreds of millions a year from the West go to Hamas, yet zero hospitals and zero new schools have been built in the last five years. Yet over 30 terror tunnels have been found in the last two years. They are controlled by Hamas. If anyone defends Hamas, I'm sorry. That's just an indecent mm -hmm. conversation I can't have for you. Oh, okay, that, you have a right to that opinion, but let me, let me, let me finish what I'm... What, what did I just say that's incorrect, though? Because I think the fact that there's no who new hospitals and no new schools being built, and it's Hamas, hundreds of millions of dollars are being given to them by the UN and by the US. And you guys denounce Hamas. Do you denounce Hamas? What? You don't, wait, what do you think of Hamas? Wait, what do you think of Hamas? Do you know that it's... No, no, it's an open space. What? Do you, no, you don't, it's actually. It's, it's a First Amendment right. You're in a public space. No Thank expectation you. of privacy. So I'm sorry. You, for, you forfeited your right to privacy yeah. being in an open space on a public ground in a public university. So, let me say, though, but, like, you do know in Hamas's charter, it does say to kill Jews, right? Like, in Hamas's actual, like, governing True. documents. Are you okay with that? Well, pa uh, Hamas does use children as human shields. Well, we are. We are. We are. But if, if a 12-year-old is part of Hamas, I have to look at the specifics of that, they should be They should be interviewed. I mean, of course. I've never said that a country is at fault. I have said they are the most moral country in the Middle East, and I'm fascinated by the amount of hatred that is thrown at them. I'm fascinated by the amount of hatred that is thrown at a country of 8 million Jews and a sliver of freedom in the Middle East. So who ran Gaza up until 2005? No. Israel did. Israel used to occupy the Gaza Strip. 10,000 Jews left Gaza. The IDF totally withdrew. Why did Israel do that? To pursue peace. Because they, they were promised a peace deal if they got out of Gaza. Then Hamas took over as mayor of Gaza, and it's now a hot tub for terrorists, where there are thousands of rockets every single month. Exactly. Israel signed a peace accord and the PA violated it. So, so this is the way peace... Occupying territory. They weren't occupying, they got out. You just said Israel occupied that territory Correct. in Gaza until they got out, so that's not... No, no, but they got out on a condition of peace. So they said, we will get our 10,000 Jews out of Gaza. So 10,000 Jews used to live in Gaza. Like recognize that they were occupying someone's territory and that's on you. Well, so so who, who is Gaza's territory? Whose is that? Egypt. It's been it's been Egypt for two thousand years. Charlie. Okay, so how so since you you understand this maybe, um, how did Israel win back that territory? Right. So in the nineteen sixty seven war, they pushed back Egypt all the way to their borders, and so they they gave up the Sinai Desert in pursuit of peace with Egypt. That worked. That worked. So then they kept the occupation of Gaza, which there's factories and rolling hills and vineyards, a lot of wealth there. There's two million people that live in Gaza, more or less. 10,000 Jews lived on the eastern skirt of Gaza. So in pursuit of peace, in the 2005 peace talks, Israel said, you know what? We want peace in, as a condition. We'll get out if you guys have real peace with us. Stop launching rockets, stop building terror tunnels, stop killing our children, all these sorts of things. Are you pro Hezbollah or? Can I ask a question? Sure, happy to. What formal education do you have? Plenty. I mean, formal education. Like if, if you're going to argue, if you're going to argue from authority, that's a logical fallacy. Tell me why I'm wrong. Don't tell me how many degrees Thank you, you have. Don't ask me to change the conversation. I'm, I'm actually, I, I would, I would argue, I'm more informed because I didn't go to college and I've traveled the world and I've met with world mm. leaders and I've read many books. So tell me, how am I oppressive? Can you name one example of how I'm oppressive? I can name a lot of examples. Can you name one? Name one example of how I'm oppressive because you just said it. literally here telling people that they are wrong about views and their Well, no, they just don't have facts. Can you tell me one time that I've been wrong about anything I've said? Tell me a time that Israel has launched an offensive war. It's Lebanon. They didn't. They're attacking Hezbollah. That was within their borders. It was to Lebanon. They don't just attack Hezbollah occupies southern Lebanon, which is Iranian-funded, is it not? Really? I had no idea. Thank you for informing me. Anytime. Maybe if you didn't go to college, you would learn more. Oh, you're so right. You're so right. Here, here's the thing. But like, IDF is a terrorist organization. How is the, I, the IDF is a terrorist organization? Yeah. No, according to a lot of people. Wait, hold on a second. The no, IDF. Not me, but like a lot of countries around. Why is it that they haven't built a new school or hospital in the last five years? Hundreds of millions of dollars pour into Gaza. It's because Hamas runs Gaza right now, and they're a terrorist organization. 
So Israel got out of Gaza in 2005 in the pursuit of peace. 10,000 Jews were actually forced out of their homes in the pursuit of peace. Gaza got more dangerous. It became a hot tub for terrorists. You know where Hamas's money is being spent? On terror tunnels and rockets being shot towards Tel Aviv. Where were those two rockets shot two weeks ago out of? They were shot out of Gaza. Yeah, two rockets. Oh, what's the big deal? Yeah, who cares when Jews have rockets shot at them, right? Because Israel is, is fighting a defensive right for its own national sovereignty. All True. Israel has done since 1967 is go backwards. All Israel has done. The UN sent an Asian diplomat, I forget his name exactly what it was, to go investigate crimes against humanity in Gaza. Israel did not allow him to enter Gaza because they said his visa wasn't valid. And that was published in an Israeli newspaper. Okay, so I'll have to look into that. If that's the case, then I'll, I'll say that you're correct. Um, but here's the question, though. So Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East right now. They're practicing democracy. Muslims, Jews, and Christians... Well, they, they, they can. Hold, hold on a second. Oh, oh, th th first of all, many Palestinians in Palestinian Authority that is in Zone B, not Zone A, can vote in elections. True. Secondly, secondly, here's the question. Do you want, so you want them to be able to vote both in PA elections and Israeli elections? Why hasn't the PA had an election in 12 years? Mahmoud Abbas is a dictator of the mm. PA that uses the money and the aid that we give him to enrich himself. Oh, Mahmoud Abbas, hold on a second. Hold on. Oh, hold on, but I thought he was democratically elected. So why don't you guys have students against the Palestinian Authority, not students against Israel? The Palestinian Authority... The Palestinian Authority is guns against Palestinian children. Oh, I, I, I thought... Well, Palestinian Authority was democratically elected 12 years ago. Mahmoud Abbas has not had any checks and measures against him. In Nablus, he lives in a 25,000 square foot mansion. Here, here, here's the bottom line, is that Arabs are better served under Israeli government than under the Palestinian Authority government. Arabs are... I'm sorry, what? Yeah, wait, wait, I'm sorry, what? When they're in the ground dead. How? That's where a majority of Palestinians end up. What are you, a majority of Palestinians end up How? dead? How dare you say something like that? There's, there's 15 and a half million people that live in the Palestinian Authority. Half of them end up dead? So you're, you're trying to tell me that seven and a half million Palestinians have been killed? Is that what you're trying to say? I've never seen that number. Well, it's actually 15 and a half million is if you count the PA and Israel together. You're right, it's more like, it's more of 6 million in Palestinian Authority, 9.5 million in Israel proper. So it's about 15 combined. So six million. So you're trying to tell me 3 million people have been killed? 3 million people have been killed by the IDF? That's not even close to being true. Yeah. So let me, let me ask, let me ask. There's a difference between Zionism and anti-Semitism. Then build, build out that, build that out for me. you don't support the state of Israel, doesn't mean... So let me get this straight. You, you, you don't hate Jews, you just hate the Jews' right to exist in their no, homeland. You're not even Jews, you can't speak to the Okay. Wait, hold on a second. That's wait, 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 wait. a. They're not black. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, exactly. Like, so that, that, that's one of the worst identity <laughs> politics arguments. Just because black. I'm not something, it doesn't make me wrong. No, no you're not. You don't have it's an apartheid state of Israel. That's not, that's not in line with conservative politics. How's, how so? Because there is no separation of church and state. Then why, the why can, let me ask you a question. Why can Christians freely practice their religion in Israel, but Jews can't freely practice their religion in the Palestinian Authority? How are Jews not practicing it? What happens if an Israeli citizen goes into a Bethlehem? What, what happens if a Jew goes into Bethlehem? What happens if a Muslim goes into Jerusalem, they can go to a mosque. That's what happens. You know what happened? Al Asqa Mosque? People are turned yeah. away because they can't pray in their own place. Well, hold on a second. They have full access to Al Asqa Mosque. They I was there myself. I was around 500 Muslims on the Al Asqa Mosque. Hold on a second. Jews' heads are cut off in Hebron if they go to Hebron. Jews and Israelis are not allowed in Palestinian authority. So I, I was in Hebron three weeks ago. You know what happened? If a Jew goes. If, if a Jew goes to Hebron, their head will get cut off. Okay, so Jews are not allowed in the Temple Mount? You do know that, right? No, I'm saying Palestinians, Muslims going into Al-Aqsa. Right, so I, it, it's very hotly debated. No, actually, when no, I was is. there, I was praying at Al-Aqsa, and I saw is IDF soldiers coming in while I was praying. Did they stop you? Did they stop you from praying? They, they throw, like, tear grass. No, no they don't. Not the Al-Aqsa Mark. Did they stop you from praying? I shouldn't be in fear while I'm But they I don't do what you, you say they're doing. I'm just telling you, it's not true. Did they, but I, I, I don't think you're representing reality. I was literally there. So let me ask a question. I, 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 I was there. You, you should not be able to prove your religion. You should be able, if a Muslim... Okay, that's a really interesting point. So Jews should be allowed on the Temple Mount. 
because the Muslims don't allow them on the what? Temple Mount right now. So Jordanian control but the Temple was, Mount. It was since the Prophet Muhammad. It was it was it was there since the Prophet Muhammad. Oh, okay. So do you think it, here's the thing? So you think do you think Jews should be allowed on the Temple Mount? It's it's a. So you don't think it's a Temple Mount because if you do, that's the very interesting thing. If you just say it's a Temple Mount, I, I'm putting you in a, admittedly, in a very difficult position because Muslims do not recognize it as a Temple Mount. Right. They recognize it as their place of worship, and it's been that way since the beginning. No, it's been the Temple Mount since King David. Thank you very much. So, I mean, you could say whatever you wanted to say. I, it's a huge point. It's actually like it's one of the biggest inhibitions of peace. I think that Jews and Muslims and Christians should all be allowed to go to the Temple Mount. Right now, Muslims do not allow Jews to go into the Temple Mount. One rabbi is allowed to go in once a year. That's it. That's, that, that's the treaty. Why is that? It's that how is that fair? Why are Jews not allowed to go? But it's, I, I mean, Muslims are allowed to go to their holy sites. You, you just said you were allowed to go. Okay, but so people, doesn't mean that other people aren't allowed to go. I'll, I'll, and if, if that's the case, then I'll totally denounce it. But you, you are a living example that you were allowed to go. <laughs> I'm a proud member of the Young Democratic Socialists of America on campus. Um, I'm expecting booze from that. I don't mind. No, you're, um, you're around conservatives, so. Also, for the record, um, not that it matters, but if I were to host an event on campus, I'd be more than happy to have people disagree with me to come first. Unfortunately, I do not get to host events. I wish. Uh, first off, I wanted to just make a, a small factual correction to something that you said, uh, which is about the 130 uh, migrants on the terror list that have crossed the border. Um, the actual number is 160, and those were numbers that had been stopped at the border, meaning they were prevented from entering, uh, which means that these people were stopped during the Biden administration. Right. So you're not exactly strengthening your argument. Um, it's actually higher. Thank you. And so how many pe gotaways have there been at the border this year? Say that again, sorry. Got gotaways, people that weren't tracked that we don't know that came into the interior? Uh, unfortunately, that's kind of hard to track, as you said. Uh, however, that's actually, I just wanted to- Yeah, it's about 500,000 minimum. Wow, okay. Yeah, I just wanted wow. to give you that number though, just so that you're aware. But um, that's actually not my question, my qu or my point, I guess. My point was about uh, Palestine. Um, you what? mentioned- what, what country Palestine. is Palestine. Oh, okay, where is that? In the Middle East. It, wait, is it in Judea and Samaria? <laughs> Sorry, say that again, I can't hear you. What, well. what, what country are you talking about? <laughs> Palestine. It exists. Tell being sarcastic. Yes. Oh. In fact, it existed before the current Israel. Oh, really? What? Yes. According to who? Uh, according to history books. Oh, okay. that is a lie. So wait, you mean Judea and Samaria, the rightful homeland of the Jews that they call the West Bank and they're currently occupying? If you're going by religion, sure. I personally don't go by religion. Oh, what do you what do you go by then? What where the Arabs want to occupy? Logic. Oh, and really? History. So whose is Gaza? Uh, Gaza is a location. I'm sorry, I'm getting a call, and I don't want that to interfere in the mic. Uh, Gaza is location within Palestine, but. I'd like to go on to my point, if you will. Um, currently, Israel is actually being labeled by international human rights organizations such as Amnesty International as an apartheid state because they are attacking many people from within Palestine and they have been actually, the land has been stolen from Palestine. Not to say that the people in uh, Israel do not deserve their own land. I am, personally, I am a believer in a two-state solution. I wanna make that clear. And I also want to make clear that I do not agree with the uh, recent incidents because there is no excuse for harming civilians. However, I do want to Good, make you're a morally point. clear on that. Good. Thank you. Uh, I do want to make clear that also um, Israel has captured more than 228 Palestinian children in which they held in containment. And of these, 86 percent uh, were beaten. Oh, and these were, by the way, the, the 220 is only those that were able to be surveyed. So they were recovered. Um, the 86% of those were beaten in detention, 69% were strip searched, and 42% were injured at the point of arrest. Uh, additionally, I would like to add, due to your claim about dictators, that Benjamin Netanyahu has been in power since 2009, and he also held in power since not, from 1996 to 1999. Um, so that, you that's could argue true. that there's actually a moment when he wasn't prime minister. That's, now, now that's Tali, why I said. Now Tali uh, Bennett well was before. actually, and he's duly elected. When was the last time a boss won an election? Say that again? When was the last time Mahmoud Abbas won an election? That I do currently not have. Yeah, eight years. They don't hold elections because they're under a dictatorship. I, I'm just curious because I want to try to find some clarity more than agreement because we're, we're not going to find agreement. Um, if Israel stopped fighting, what would happen? If they laid down all their guns tomorrow, what would happen? I 
personally, I can't say I'm not in charge of any of the leadership. Yes. Yeah, so all the Jews would be streets. Killed. If Hamas it's laid not down, about Judaism, though. if if Israel's actually the ones that have taken Palestine's land. Okay. And are again, killing I'm just I'm just trying to find some moral clarity. If Hamas laid down all of their weapons, what would we have? Peace. There would be no more Palestine. Peace is what we would have. No, that's we would have peace. Excuse my language, but that's bullshit. And you okay, know so let, let me ask this: Why did Israel give Gaza back to the Arab Muslims? It's 2006. For peace. Why did they then give the Sinai to Egypt Gaza? for why peace? Did they throw missiles over there. No, hold on a second. Why did they give Why did they give the Sinai to Egypt for peace? Why did they give the Gaza Gaza Strip to the Palestinian Authority for peace? In Hamas's charter, what does it say? I'm not defending Hamas. How is any, how, well? Hold on a second. Right. You're, you're defending the Palestinian Authority, which is partners with Hamas, and they duly elected oh, no, them. No, no, no. How not is, how is Hamas's charter any different than Nazi Germany's charter towards the Jews? I'm not defending any of that. And for one, so it, what what are you defending? Hold on. Exactly. For one, I'm defending the right of Palestine to exist, which I want to clarify. I am not telling you that you're being Islamophobic by supporting Israel. I'm not telling you that you want to kill the <laughs> Muslims. So trying to say that. The existence no, no, of Palestine here's a fact. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. I think this last ridiculous. weekend displayed the holes in your argument. When Jews go for their high holy day, Arabs come in and kill Jews. When Arabs want to have peace, the Jews will come to the table for a peace agreement. Abraham Accords, the Oslo Accords. Any time that the Arabs want to talk, the Jews will come to the table to talk in the Why? pursuit of peace. Why? Meanwhile, Why? this weekend, in a slight vulnerability, what happened? Jews are celebrating the end of Yom Kippur, the reading of the Torah, and they come in and they kill 900 Jews. And answer me this. If this was an isolated incident, why were they greeted as heroes by the people of Gaza after they not, killed 900 women and children? I want to make this clear once more because you seem to not be understanding. I am not defending these actions. I am simply refuting the claims that you made of earlier in this argument. Here's the thing. I, I think a two-state solution sounds great if you don't actually – live in reality <laughs> let me tell you what reality is the arabs don't want to govern their own people they would rather hate jews every day they're saying death to the jews True. kill the jews they do not want to govern their own people there is no middle ground when they have their they're screaming to the sky for antifada israel has been at the table time and time again do you agree abraham accords trying to True. find peace Trying to sit down with Mahmoud Abbas. The Israelites have hundreds yes, of Palestinian Alifat. children in detention. They have sent missiles to Palestine and killed hundreds of civilians. After this event, Netanyahu declared that he will send missiles to Palestine in an area where the Palestinian civilians are not able to leave. Wait, hold and on a second. Hold on a second. You, you mean the Gaza? Yes. Right, where they actually gave warnings to apartment buildings. They put a what kind of, they Israel can't is so bad Gaza. that they tell people they to build. leave before they bomb them. Hamas comes on a holy day in the kibbutzes and cuts women's heads off at concerts. The moral equivalence is so different. And let me just ask you, what do you think is a bigger impediment to peace, Hamas or Israel? Uh, if you would like, I'd prefer if you could stop interrupting me. Um, well, I'm the speaker, you're not. So well, let me just like remind you, like you're a college kid. You see, you came to our event. So let, let me just ask yeah, you a very clear yeah. question. Bigger impediment to peace, Palestinian Authority or Israel? Israel. Prove it. Israel. Tell, tell one situation where Israel has not come to the table. Israel has given up land. When was the last time the Palestinian Authority willingly gave up land for peace? Israel's bombed never, the land. Never, because they, they don't up. want peace. They want dead Jews. And we as Americans should never put up with the intentional extermination of Jews again in our country. Thanks for being here. Thank Israel. you. Thank you. We're going to the next question. Do not question. argue that when you have these debates. We're going to the next question. Thank you. Thank so you. Why is it about it there? We're going to take the next question. Thank you. Why is it bringing a reason to the conversation? That is closeted Jew hatred laundered through Arab talking. To preface. Uh, I'm a progressive, and I would like to have some discourse with you over the Israel-Palestine okay. conflict. Um, and uh, I'm just gonna say I fully condemn Hamas. And um, like I love the acknowledgement. Uh, my current position is that uh, there should be a one-state solution where uh, it's uh, anti-apartheid. However, there uh, there should be uh, the international community with the United Nations. Uh, should be should be responsible for leading the peace process um, and personally I think or the Hamas and the Israeli government are essentially two sides of the same coin um, 
And uh, so. Uh, you were doing so well. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, that's okay. Uh, I'm not good with public speaking. No, no, so no. <laughs> I just mean the points. The speaking is fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. The, yeah. Um, so I, I think um, with the recent conflict, of course, Hamas, what Hamas did was terrible. Uh, however, I think it's very important to understand the context of why they did it. Um, so they're very radical, and that radicalization has essentially formed from is the Israel, Israeli government uh, bullying the Gaza Strip uh, for the past 50 years um, and obstructing okay. their freedoms. Okay. Um, let me just ask. So. Thank you for condemning the attacks. I wish we had every member of Congress that could do that. Um, so, True. however, uh, let, let's just let's just make sure we have our you know stuff clear. You say the Israeli government and Hamas are the same side of the a coin, right? Um, maybe there's there's a, uh, there's some differences. Yes, but okay. Yeah. Well, the differences are pretty big. So, mm -hmm. let me just go through the last two weeks, and I want you to just at least acknowledge it or not acknowledge it. Hamas gave no warning before they slaughtered 1,300 women and children. Israel did multiple days of warnings and dropping leaflets before they dropped any bombs on civilian corridors. Is that moral equivalency? Well, um, I, I think, of course, I think Hamas is much worse. Okay, good. Uh, so they're not the same coin. Got it. So because you maybe said they're similar coins, maybe the penny and the nickel. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Let's go to the let's go to the next question. Let's go to the next kind of. Well, uh, okay. Element. So um, I think that, uh, so as I said earlier, I think the international community should get more involved. Uh, a while ago, I read the book, Palestinian Peace, Not Apartheid by President Jimmy Carter. And the book essentially boils down to, the book essentially boils down to three things. The Israel, uh, the Israel country and its borders should be respected. I agree. Uh, uh, Palestinians and Jews should be should coexist peacefully, and um, uh, they shouldn't be killed, which is the third thing. Uh, I, right. I think. So okay, I got to well, interrupt. Okay, uh, sorry. No, no, I'm so a, sorry. All right, no, it's okay. So let me just. Add, I, I want to try to get this along to some sort of clarity, if not agreement. Who's a bigger impediment to peace, Israel or Hamas? Um, I think the biggest impediment is the reactionary uh, politics and um, like reactions between the two groups. Hamas it, uh, had been ra radicalized by the Jews, or rather the Israel government, uh, which had been radicalized by the history of oh, Arabs no, no, killing Jews. I got to get you Wait, what? <laughs> like you, you said, Hamas is radicalized by the Israeli government. Well, it's they're, been, they're radicalized it's been by radicalized. Islam, not by the Israeli government. Islam believe, is what okay. radicalized them all. <laughs> not, not everything goes back to the Jews, man, right? Like, well, no, no, no. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, so I think so. The, the conflict essentially boils down to its history. The Arabs killed uh, a bunch of Jews in its history. The Jews killed a bunch of or uh, through the Zionist movement, through colonialism. And um, like during, okay. All so, right. Yeah. I, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I just want to ask one final question. Is if Hamas would lay down all of the, before this massacre, okay, would have laid down all of their weapons, what do you think would have happened? And if Israel laid down all of their weapons, what do you think would happen? So uh, I'll address the second part. If, uh, if Israel lays down all its weapons, I think... Uh, terrorist groups such as Hamas and the Palestinian Authority would uh, use this opportunity to kill a bunch of Israelis. I agree. Sure. So we, we have clarity on that. So, great. Before the massacre, because heightened tensions, if Hamas would have laid down their weapons and Gaza would have laid down their weapons, what do you think would have happened? I think um, the Israel government would try to essentially do something similar, where they would try to okay. push out some of all of the Palestinians. Uh, as no, we, we would have I do peace, not think they have freedom have. movement. So we're not going. We're not going to agree on this. Let me just make a couple okay. points. Israel, time and time again, has sat down for peace. Abraham Accords, Oslo Accords, Camp David Accords, which was facilitated. At every corner, Israel has given up land, Sinai Peninsula, parts of the West Bank, parts of Judea and Samaria, in the pursuit of peace. And I just encourage you, 
and you, you've, done, you've been intellectually honest, but I want you to think about this, and anyone who might agree with you, that this, these are not morally equivalent. You have one side that is a democratically elected government that allows pluralism in the Knesset, Arab, Judaism. In Gaza, they are one size fits all. Hamas took over power, was voted into power, and the stated, the stated doctrine of Hamas is no morally different than Nazism. It's not an exaggeration. It's not about land. It's not about winning hearts or souls. It's about killing Jews. Mm. And the issue is this, well, not more than the issue, is that Hamas now invited this conflict, okay? And this is where my sympathy kind of wanes down to little next to nothing, is that there was at least some form of an equilibrium. They were in Gaza, Israel is in Israel, and on a holy day in the 50-year anniversary of the Yom Kippur War, they decided to go into kibbutzes, which I know that you denounce, but at that point, they're going to F around and find out, and Hamas should be obliterated for that Straight. action. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. So, uh, speaking of America first, I have to point out that you spent half your speech talking about a foreign country thousands of miles away. Uh, which brings me to my question. Um, last year, <laughs> this guy is funny. Born USA hosted the Young Jewish Leadership Summit, during which you said, so a Christian that's not pro-Israel, I doubt they actually love their Bible. And I will stand by that statement. If you are a Christian that doesn't love Israel, then you take your Bible way, way, way too much for granted." End quote. So who are you to question the faith of Christian Americans that don't support a foreign country of a different religion that has spied on us, attacked us, and lied to us, like about WMDs in Iraq? And especially given your recent suggestion that Israel allowed the recent Hamas attacks to happen, why would you support a country that would do that? And do you still stand by your statement like you said you would? No, I, I definitely stand by the statement. Um, so I'm not an apologist for the Israeli government, but let me ask you, what religion was Jesus? What did he believe? Uh, yeah, well, obviously he was Jew, but oh. modern day Judaism is Hold on, hold on, really... time out, time out, time out. No, no, no. Where was Jesus born? Well, somebody say he was the first Christian. Well, hold on. time out. Well, wh where was Jesus born? Why does that matter? Well, no, do you know? Why does that matter? Okay, yeah, you're obviously not a Christian if you don't know where Jesus was born. He was born in Bethlehem, okay. In Judea. So, and he was raised in Nazareth, and yeah. he walked on the water in Capernaum. What country are those places in right now? What does it matter? It's Matos. It does matter. You know why? Because yeah. when I went to Israel, I came in contact with the living God that walked mm -hmm. on water and rose Lazarus from the dead. When I went to Israel, I saw the Bible come to life. When I went to Israel, I saw Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Sarah, Rebecca, and Leah in the Hall of the Patriarchs. When I went to Israel, what I read as Bible stories popped open, and I said, this is the word of God. This is real. These are not fairy tales or fables True. or things that we tell our kids. When I went to Israel, I was able to cry where Jesus cried, where he was betrayed by Judas and arrested, where he rose from the dead and gives us eternal life. I am not an apologist for Israel, but I reject wholeheartedly this narrative. Christians who turn their back on Israel, it says in Genesis and Romans and First Thessalonians, Paul said, you will bless the Jews. If you bless Israel, you will be blessed. If you scorn Israel, you will be scorned. True. The Israeli government, plenty of suspicious things going on. How do we know the Bible is true? Every day, there are archaeological discoveries that confirm the truths of the Bible in 1 Samuel, in 1 Kings, true. in 1 Chronicles. There is a diabolical, satanic agenda every single day to try and delegitimize the scriptures. And I will defend the Holy Land, the place that let me see where my Lord and Savior lived. And I will not apologize for that. Thank you very much. Charlie's a preacher. Next question. Thank you. I have a disagreement about the whole Palestine-Israel thing. I promise not to take up as much time as the last person no who was up here. But um, I'd like to open with a, a maybe like a little statement, which is that, you know, I'm not too partial to either particular side of the political spectrum. Um, but I think that a sad reality is, is when we talk about the Palestine issue, uh, it's the Gaza Strip is 50 percent people under the age of 15. Um, it's about 2 million people and about 5 to 25 square miles. And the reality of it is is that Israel has said they're going to make a complete siege of the area. They've cut off electricity. They've cut off water. Um, and that's kind of a sad reality. And the reality is they also can't leave. There's only two ports of entry and exit. And so as much as you or others might be pro-Israel, 
how do we not condemn the Israelis for taking away resources like water from a population that's the majority children? Um, and, and at what point do we say that it's kind of an open genocide, right? Like when, well, when well, Israel, well, I mean, I, I know, I know it's easy to see. You, you realize on Saturday they killed 900 I, Jews, I'm not, right? I'm, I, mean, I, understand, yeah, I, I understand. One side's doing the genocide, the other side is retaliating. Well, one, well, one yeah. side's definitely swinging up and one side's swinging down. And I think that when you're a, when you're a strip of land in which all of your water, airways, and, and, and electricity is controlled by a state, uh, which you can't leave, and it gets bombed by missiles. I don't really think it's quite equivocal. I mean, obviously, everyone here can condemn the killing of civilians, and that's not a debate that I'm I'm going to have with. Not just can they slaughter? Right. Sure. But um, but at what point in time, you know, you say you criticize Republicans, but uh, why don't we ever cri like criticize Israel for uh, for what they're doing by turning off water? I mean, how? Well, well, I'm what, not going to like? so again. Well, let me just ask a hypothetical: if, if Cuba came to Miami and killed 50,000 Americans, would should we cut off their water? Answer the question. No, if, absolutely not. Okay, I disagree. You, you think we should cut off water to a to if, straight if, if the Cuban government came and killed 50,000 Americans, which is the population equivalent, right? Sure. So 900 Jews would be 50,000 Americans. Yeah, yeah. I would completely support war against a country that kills 50,000 Americans. Cuba is the same, about similar distance, right? So, yes, I would restrict, I would restrict food, water. It would be all-out war against the country that touched our homeland. Well, you know what they call all out war against a, a populace of people that are stuck in an area. It's, it's a genocide, right? And so as much as I No, agree hold on a second. No, no, no. First of all, if that was the case, why is Israel telling civilians to leave a certain area? Before the strike. One? Well, if, only that are allowed if, to hold leave, on a second. right? Wait, hold on. I'm sorry. What? Like, are Palestinians allowed to leave the Gaza Strip? Well, they're moving to a different location of the Gaza Strip before bombardments happen. That's number one. Number two, they're already talking about humanitarian corridors being built. Did you know that? They're yeah. talking about humanitarian corridors sure. being built with Egypt. So there's already a plan from both the Mediterranean side and the south side. But honestly, I'm not going to overly specify this because war is a really brutal, nasty thing. True. And you could say whatever you want about Israel. We're not going to agree on it, right? Sure. Israel did not invite this war. No, I, I don't think so either. Right, but, but just... they have to retaliate, and war is the worst thing humans do. Here's my prayer, sure. that Israel doesn't overreact. Americans don't send troops and that this is short and that the terrorists that did this are held to justice. That's what we need to publicly say. But I, I, I am not. And you're, you're right. There are kids that are going to die. That pains me. It should, the heaviness should be on you. But the answer is you just kind of roll over and allow people to come into your country, into kibbutzes, into concerts, and mowing down people and say, you know, get, catch you next time. I'm just not entirely sure what water has to do with the conflict, Mr. Kirk. I, I just don't see how the Israelis, it's the Palestinians, war. the PLO, and, and Hamas honestly, can use water. Two things. Here, here's, the, here's the issue. The Palestinian Authority is too busy spending $300 million a year incentivizing the slaying of Jews instead of actually going and purchasing water filtration services, you know, all, all sorts of different things there. Number two. So they build their headquarters under hospitals. Hmm. It's a fact. Uh -huh. They use the entire population of women and children – in Gaza as a massive 2.5 million person human shield. That's sick. There are no good solutions here. There's not one that I'm going to say this is wonderful and beautiful and glamorous and this is excellent. It's all crummy. It's all hell. And they invited hell. And something that we like to gloss over as Westerners is we get to live in a very peaceful society, relatively, and we don't realize that sometimes you need a Dresden. And that's a really hard thing to swallow. But guess what? What we did in World War II to defeat the Nazis was 100% morally defensible. And there were people that also died. Israel has a right to defend themselves, and they're going to retaliate. And Hamas, they brought this upon themselves. They were the stewards of those women and children. <clears throat> and as stewards of those women and children, they said, we don't care about the women and children enough that we're going to go into the other. They knew what was. You're trying to tell me that they're shocked that they're getting bombarded and their water's cut off and their electricity is cut? No, they invited it. Final thought. Sure. I, I, I wouldn't necessarily say they, but I, I do understand the sentiment, right? Okay. I, I do agree that Hamas brings it upon But themselves. I think we can agree. Here's what I will say. I do not think U.S. <laughs> troops outside of very specific special forces to rescue Americans, which I'm sure you might be able to agree with, should be involved in this conflict. Yeah. We can we cannot allow ourselves to get into another Middle Eastern quagmire True. that Lindsey Graham and Nikki Haley and Mike Pence might try to get us into. That is something we can agree with, okay? True. Uh, this entire video actually makes sense, like, full sense. I love how Charlie handled this program as students.
<laughs> yeah, I try to humiliate them and shut them down. Um, the funny thing is how they kind of like paint the entire story. Every single one of them who came here to say something, uh, putting Palestine as the good guys and Israel as a villain. Like it, it's 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 terrible. It's how it's how they are looking Israel to be these Jewish people as if they are the bad people, whereas they are just trying to defend their land and fight on. If not, more Jewish people are going to be killed. That is a straight fact. Once Israel, once Jewish people keep quiet, once Israel keep quiet, more of them are going to be killed. So they have to retaliate. I said, the funny thing is that that land that Palestine are fighting for originally was never their own. It's, it's the plain truth that we all have to say, even if it's bitter. It's the plain truth. Palestine are residing in a land that is not their own. It's as simple as that. You could go search. The land itself is for Israel. For Israel to allow Palestine governments to own Gaza in the first place and step aside. In 2006, the peace contract that they made and step aside. It really means something because Israel does not want war. They don't want any Jewish people again to be killed. They just want peace. And the Hamas now that came out and killed a lot of innocent Jewish people during the ceremony, it's, it's a barbaric act that we all have to criticize and denounce. Because that act of them slaughtering and killing mothers, fathers, and even children, it's a barbaric act. And it's something that we are all keeping quiet about and we all have to speak out. That's a very barbaric act. If you notice, whenever Israel wants to throw in missile, you see warning every single time they warn before they release any trigger, any weapon, any missile. They always give warning to the site they are going to invade. They always give warning every single time that people should evacuate from there. Every single student who came out here to hold a mic, are sending, they, are, they are all seeing Israel as a villain, as a bad people, as people who are causing harms to Palestine and causing harms to children, Palestinian children and fathers and mothers and making them not to have where to live or where to stay. And the more they are painting Israel as civilians, I'll be like, why? Why is all hands pointing at Israel? Like, why are they all pointing at Israel? Israel is a bad guy. Go check history, guys. History will speak for itself. It's as simple as that. History never lies, guys. It will speak for itself that that land belongs to Israel. Not Palestine. Palestine, they came over and reside. The original owner of that land is Israel. Guys, this entire video, guys, I love how Charlie handled every single one of the students. It is it's a beautiful way for you to handle such such students. Even some of them were actually like smug. Charlie handled them properly. Very, very properly. I didn't give them reasons. The first guy who came in the, in the beginning of the video, he came unprepared. He have no fat to check. He was not prepared. And you can't come up to Charlie without you being prepared. And every single thing he was saying, he was not actually sure. It's just what he heard, he said out. He was not prepared. Then followed by the second people who were voicing that voice at Charlie. They were not stating that fat right. And Charlie is someone who have actually visited such sites. <laughs> it's the funny thing that Charlie has been to Israel. He have seen those places and he's telling them, this is how the system works. This is what is really happening. That the media is not showing you guys. It's not everything that the media show you that is actually true. Because we all accept what the media shows. But it's not everything that the media show you is actually true. It's people who live there. Maybe you have friends or family that lives there that you are able to contact and tell you, they were able to tell you what really happened. Or you have been there and see it for your own eyes what is really happening before you can make a judgment. You can't just make a judgment just because of what the media alone shows you. Because sometimes the media paints story in a way that will favor their inner self. So I love how Charlie handled every single one of them. This was an amazing video. I love the entire video, guys. Um, it's, it's really beautiful to watch. And I don't know why they see Israel as villains. Like, they are the good guys, if you ask me. They are the one who's fighting for peace. And once Israel keep quiet, a lot of Jewish people are going to be killed.
comment down below, subscribe to this video, give us a thumbs up, share this video to as many as you can, subscribe to our channel guys, I will see you guys in the next video, make sure you stay safe.